archaeologists in Egypt have made a shocking discovery in the Valley of the Kings. Hidden beneath the sand, they have found the remains of a previously unknown pharaoh. This is an incredible find that is sure to rewrite history. The discovery was made using new technology that allows archaeologists to see below the surface of the sand. This is sure to be one of the most talked about discoveries of the year. First, let's look at an interesting fact about ancient Egypt. Makeup was worn by Egyptians of both sexes. Both men and women were known to wear a lot of makeup, believing that it gave them the protection of the gods Horus and Ra. These cosmetics were created by grinding minerals such as malachite and galena into a substance known as coal. It was then applied directly around the eyes with timber, bone, and ivory utensils. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about some of the shocking discoveries in the Valley of the Kings. What do you think would be the most shocking discovery to you? To see this, let's jump into the video. One of the most shocking discoveries in the Valley of the Kings is the discovery of the tomb of Seti I. Tomb KV-17, also known as Belzoni's tomb, is the tomb of Pharaoh Seti I of the 19th dynasty and is situated in Egypt's Valley of the Kings. It is one of the valley's most ornately adorned graves. Giovanni Battista Belzoni discovered it on October 16, 1817. The valley's longest tomb, measuring 137.19 meters, has remarkably well-maintained reliefs in all but two of its 11 chambers and side rooms. The opening of the mouth ritual, which declared that the mummy's eating and drinking organs were correctly working, is painted in one of the rear rooms. This was a highly significant ceremony for those who believed in the requirement for these duties in the hereafter. From underneath the place where the sarcophagus stood in the burial chamber, a lengthy tunnel extends away deep into the slope. This corridor's excavation was just finished. In the end, there was no secret burial room or any other kind of chamber. Following Seti's burial, work on the passageway was halted. A geological study was conducted in the enigmatic Tunnel K in 2008. Following his insight examination, Austrian engineer Christoph Lehmann proposes that during the excavation of KV-17, a massive flash flood occurred, flushing around 1,300 cubic meters of rubble material into the tomb, filling practically the entire construction of Tunnel K. As a result, the ancient builders were obliged to abandon Tunnel K and rebuild the tomb in its current configuration. Moving on, we have the tomb of Ramses IX, which is also known as KV-6. The last resting place of the 20th dynasty pharaoh Ramses IX is tomb KV-6 in Egypt's Valley of the Kings. However, archaeological evidence and the level of painting suggest that the tomb was not completed in time for Ramses' death, but was hurriedly completed after his death, with numerous corners cut. It is situated in the heart of the valley. Its exceptionally large entrance is located between and somewhat above the entrances of two other noteworthy tombs, KV-5 and KV-55. The tomb starts with a gate and a small descending staircase and runs 105 meters into the hillside. Following the ramp are three consecutive segments of corridor. The first features four side rooms, two on each side, although none are ornamented or completed. Three rooms are located at the end of the corridors. The first of them is ornamented with the opening of the mouth ceremonial and a well shaft may have been excavated here if the builders had more time. The second room has four massive columns, but neither the cutting nor the decorating work has been finished. A ramp slopes down to the real burial chamber where the pharaoh's sarcophagus was deposited at the far end of this room. The vaulted ceiling is adorned with magnificent images of the goddess Nut. The sidewalls depict images from the books of caverns and earth. Ramses on his bark, surrounded by a slew of gods, is shown on the far wall. The mix of yellows, dark blues, and blacks to adorn this chamber is aesthetically stunning and rare among valley tomb designs. While the sarcophagus itself is long gone, Ramses IX's mummy was discovered in the Deir el-Bari stockpile in 1881. KV-6 has been open since antiquity, as shown by graffiti on its walls left by Roman and Coptic visitors. Moving forward to our third shocking discovery of the Valley of the Kings, which is the tomb of Ramses III, also known as KV-11. 
The tomb of Ramses III is known as Tomb KV-11. The tomb, which is located in the main valley of the Valley of the Kings, was begun by Setnacht but abandoned when it broke into amun messis older tomb. Setnacht was laid to rest at KV-14. For Ramses III, the tomb KV-11 was restarted, enlarged, and shifted to a new axis. The 188-meter-long mausoleum is lavishly adorned. The tomb's axis alters at the end of this tunnel. This tomb's corridor, which is ornamented with the Books of Gates and Amdoat, passes across a ceremonial shaft into a four-pillared chamber. The Book of Gates is used to embellish this hall once again. A fourth hallway featuring images from the opening of the mouth ceremonial goes into a vestibule with scenes from the Book of the Dead before entering the burial room itself. The burial chamber is an eight-pillared hall where the red quartzite sarcophagus stood. The Book of Gates, Celestial Sceneries, and the Book of the Earth adorn this hall. A second pair of annexes, adorned with the Book of Gates, follows. The sarcophagus's exterior depicts two scenes from the Amdwat. One of the major discoveries of the King of the Valley is the discovery of the Tomb of King Tut. Tutankhamun's tomb, also known by its tomb number KV-62, is the burial site of Tutankhamun who reigned from 1334 to 1325 BC a pharaoh of ancient Egypt's 18th dynasty. The tomb has four rooms as well as an entry staircase and passageway. It is smaller and less elaborately ornamented than other Egyptian royal tombs of the period, and it most likely began as a non-royal tomb that was altered for Tutankhamun's use following his untimely death. Tutankhamun, like previous pharaohs, was buried with a broad array of funerary artifacts and personal things, like coffins, furniture, clothes, and jewelry. However, these items had to be packed tightly due to the very restricted area. Robbers broke into the tomb twice in the years after the burial, but Tutankhamun's mummy and most of the burial artifacts were unharmed. The tomb's low location, cut into the valley floor, enabled debris accumulated by floods and tomb building to conceal its entrance. As a result, unlike other tombs in the valley, it was not looted during the Third Intermediate Period. Excavators headed by Howard Carter found Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922. The tomb created a media frenzy as a consequence of the number and magnificent look of the burial items, and it became the most renowned discovery in Egyptology history. Carter's benefactor, the Earl of Carnarvon, died during the excavation process, sparking rumors that the tomb was cursed. The find yielded very little information concerning Tutankhamun's reign and the preceding Armana period, but it did give insight into the material culture of affluent ancient Egyptians as well as patterns of ancient tomb robbing. Tutankhamun became one of the most well-known pharaohs, and some of his tomb's artifacts, such as his golden funeral mask, are among the most well-known pieces of ancient Egyptian art. The majority of the tomb's contents were transferred to the Egyptian Museum in Cairo and are currently on exhibit at the Grand Egyptian Museum in Giza. However, Tutankhamun's corpse and sarcophagus remain in the tomb. Since its discovery, flooding and excessive tourist traffic have caused damage to the tomb, and a copy of the burial chamber has been built nearby to relieve visitor strain on the original tomb. This brings us to the end of our video. Don't be afraid of giving suggestions on future videos in the comments section below.